Hi, this is Kat with Beadaholic, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a beadboard to create a strung necklace. Now, I have on my beadboard here from the beadsmith, I have a strand of mixed gemstones. And the reason I'm going to use the mixed gemstones here today is because the beadboard really helps you sort of plan out your design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this apart and mix it in with some metal beads and some wood beads, but I'm not quite sure the design that I want, so I'm going to use the beadboard to help me out. But let's take a look at our board first. So there's all these little extra compartments here that can hold various things. I have my wire here, I have a couple of bead stoppers up here, just some crimp tubes, uh, various things that I'm going to need, some crimp beads there. So then it also has these three channels here. Now let's talk for a second about the numbers that you're seeing on the outside here. And on the outside, these are the inches. So if you look, let me draw your eye back down here to the zero here. So from zero to one, this is your first inch. And this is kind of a nice little center point of the necklace. So if you wanted to make sure that a bead rests right in the center, you can do that. Okay, so let's take a look. So this is one inch, two, three, four, and so on, all the way up here. So when it, you see it at eight, this is actually seven and a half inches. So the eight is all the way up here. So this is a 15 inch strand of gemstones and there's a reason why I haven't broken it out because I want to just sort of demonstrate to you that yes, it is indeed 15 inches along my ruler here, just so you can see that. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the beads that I want to use here today. So I'm going to break apart my gemstones and this is a great little technique, especially if you're working with gemstones that you may have left over from a different project, or if you do get a mixed strand like this and really, let's say you wanna use the, the two tiger's eye that come in it for a different project, but now you have all these extra beads left over. Okay, well, what do you do with all of this? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find what I think might be one of the more unique beads here. And I actually really like this. This is probably like a leopard uh, jasper here. So because it's a mixed strand, I'm not quite sure, but I think that's a really fun little focal there. So if I'm gonna start with that, this is the guy that I'm gonna put right into my beading board, right at that zero, right up there. And now I think I wanna start putting in some metal beads and wood beads. And over here, I have these great aromatic beads and they actually smell like cedar wood. They're really fun and really cool. And these are eight millimeters. So these are a little smaller than my 10 millimeter gemstones. So I think it'll add a little bit of kind of nice little space there and a nice little size difference. All right, let me go ahead and get that off of my strand. And I'm just using a, just a generic pair of flush cutters here because I'm going to use that with my wire later. All right, so I have some wood beads here. Let's see. I think I'm going to end up putting a couple little metal beads in between everything, but I'm just going to sort of place those up above there, because that'll help me just remember that that's what I want to do. And then let's go ahead and put a couple of those wood beads there. So we have a nice little kind of framing that's happening. So now if I wanted to, let's see how it works if I try to do the same color scheme going all the way up. Let's see if I, how much I can match a lot of these beads here. And I'll put those wood beads in between, and I think I'll end up putting the metal beads in between there as well. But let's just see how far I can get. I might not get as far as I want to here. So let's see, let's add some more wood beads. And this is where it's really nice to sort of visually see what's happening here. My little gold spacer beads aren't gonna add too much space, so I'll just kind of leave those up top there just as a little, little reminder that I wanted to use them there. These ones actually look kind of fun. Okay, so I have those three. Now I'm not sure that I have too much else that might match in my particular strand here, but you can absolutely do just a totally mixed, mixed strand here mix up your beads you can add more wood beads if you want a little bit more of a panel which actually that seems like a really good idea let's see I'll, i'm going to do one more i'm going to do one more of the wood bead and then i notice i have these little rose quartz ones here so i think that's nice so i really like the way that that's developing and it's showing me exactly how far along i am now the reason that the bead board is so great is that i don't have to string and unstring i can just kind of move stuff around like let's say I don't want the, the green down here or I want the yellow a little further out. Let's say I wanted to kind of move these ones and make them so they're a little further towards the outside. I can kind of see how that looks. And okay, that's not too bad. I actually like it with the tiger's eye at the front. So I'm gonna put the tiger's eye there and sort of rearrange a little bit. There we go, I, I like that because I like the blue and the pink together. I think that looks really, really nice. 
All right, let's see what else I might have together. Hmm. I think I'm gonna sort of set my little gemstones aside here for a minute. Let's see, see if there's something else I wanna go back to. I am seeing a lot of these red beads here. These are probably like a nice carnelian. And you can just see even as I'm moving these around, some have a little bit more design happening than some of the other ones. Like these two kind of tend to match really nicely. So let's put these guys in there because I want a little bit more space, I think. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to add a few more wood beads to each side. So one, two, three. Let's see, I can just kinda, I'll do five because that's what I have here without breaking that next strand. And I have sort of one left over. Okay, so I think I wanna see how far now all of these extra little beads here are gonna add in between all these little spaces. And if you don't have enough beads, you can sort of count out how many. But what I always like to do is I'm gonna start in the center here. So I'm gonna kind of shift over just a little bit. I'm gonna start by taking my beading wire. And some people like to leave it on the spool. I like to go ahead and cut mine off right away, bringing in my ruler here. And if I want, let's say, let's say I want a 16 inch necklace here today. I always recommend at least two inches on either side. Sometimes you can go a little bit further so let's do 15 and I'll do 16. So that's how long I want my necklace to be. And then I like to add two more inches and at least two more inches. And I'm gonna add another inch just for good measure, just to make sure that it's gonna be nice and easy on me to do those crimps. All right, so now I'm gonna put my guide back on there. And I am using the beetle on the 49 strand in the 0 0.08 inches. And the reason I'm using the 49 strand is because I'm working with some gemstones here today and they are 10 millimeters, so they're gonna be a little heavy. So I wanna make sure that I have good flexibility, but this is also gonna be nice and strong for me. So this is what I've chosen to use for today. All right, so now let's start. We're gonna take one of our little bead stoppers and I'm gonna place that about two inches or so from one end. Get my ruler out of the way. And let's go ahead and start with our center bead. Let's go ahead and drop that right down there, right to the center. And now I'm just gonna alternate, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna string up my beads. I'm gonna add in those little metal spacers and string up this one side and see how we're, see how we're looking. All right, I'm gonna ease these guys down here. There we go. Now you can kind of try to string it along, you know, while it's in the channel there. Sometimes I like to just take it out. It's entirely up to you. Sometimes I find it hard to get it perfect and line up the holes there anyway. So you want to do what feels best for you. But the beadboard is really great to plan a design. That way you can just sort of see how it really comes together. And I'm going to show you how we can kind of size this again without using a ruler. So if you don't have a ruler at your um, at your fingertips, you can use your beadboard. But I'm already really liking the way that it looks with all those little spacers in between there. But you don't have to add the spacers, you know, if, if you don't want to. I just like that little, little flash of metal. I think it adds a little something to a, a nice strong necklace. All right, so we're getting close towards the end here of adding the gemstones. Just a couple more. All right, and I'm gonna finish it off with this gemstone here. All right, so now if we remember our little guy in the center there, now look how much it's added about the length of a bead and a half. So I'm just gonna kind of push those up there for a second. And now we can sort of see what our spacing looks like on this side. So I actually really like that. I think I'll still be able to get all five of those beads and I think I'll still do the spacers there. But because I'm not quite sure, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a second bead stopper and I'm gonna put it right there on that side and then I can remove my bead stopper on this side and I'm ready to string up the next side and see how we're looking. So I'm going to do that really quick, just doing the same method as before and then we're gonna see where we're at. 
Okay, so I've strung out my second side. So this is what I have to work with now. And I do like the amount of gemstones. I know that I still do have quite a few down here, but you know, I really like what I have going on up here. I like the colors, I like the balance of everything. So I'm gonna stick with this for now. So the last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add on four wood beads onto each side, and I'm just gonna add those little metal spacers in between. So let me do that really quick here. And I can just kind of kind of leave it up here at this point if you wanted to. But those bead stoppers are really great um, just to let you kind of pick it up and you can see how it's working with. And some of these wood beads, I just want to point out, they have, because they're natural, they have a little bit of um, kind of sediment in them. So you can just sort of poke your needle through there. Or if you have like a round nose plier or even a beard bead core, you can do that there as well just to kind of get some of that out of there. But because they're natural wood, that's that's bound to happen. Okay, yeah, and I'm really loving the way the metal beads are working with my design here. It just adds a little something. All right, and I am actually going to not end with a metal bead because we're going to be ending with a metal crimp. So I just ended with a wood bead, so I'm going to place my bead stopper back on there. And let's just repeat that real quick on the other side here. So making sure that everything is where it should be. I haven't doubled up on any beads. This is a good point to just double check everything. And then I'm going to be using a very basic finishing technique. There's a lot of different things that you can do, but because I'm going to be using some gemstones here, I'm going to be using some thread protectors. So we'll go over that in just a moment. There we go. <laughs> oh, I can smell that cedar. It smells really good. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I must have picked up one that was down here. All right, so let's just double check my design one more time. Let's move that, remove that metal bead. I thought I had one more to add. See, this is where those bead stoppers come in really, really handy. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, and my design is good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of bring it off my bead board here so I can work in front of me. And I'm gonna focus on just one end here. So I was talking about thread protectors and those are these little horseshoe guys here. Now these are really, really neat to work with because you can add your clasp right onto them. And let me just bring down a couple of my little guys here. So I have some crimp tubes that I'm gonna work with and some crimp beads. So this is a crimp cover and this is what I mean where I'm gonna have that little extra piece of metal that's gonna be happening right here. So I wouldn't wanna do a metal bead and then a crimp cover because it just isn't gonna look right for my purposes. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna string on one of our little crimp tubes here and then we're gonna string on one of our thread protectors. Now these are these little horseshoe things. So you go ahead and string it up and over and down. And before we string it back down through that crimp tube, I'm actually gonna slip on my little clasp here and it's gonna sit right in there. So it's gonna be nice and enforced. So I'm not gonna have to worry about my wire sort of um, fraying over time. All right, so now I'm gonna scooch my little crimp down. So I have both of my wires in there and you wanna get it fairly close to the top there without pinching. So you want it to have a nice little sort of curve to it. All right, so I'm gonna use the Zuron four in one crimping pliers and we're gonna put it in that very first little notch there that's closest to the fulcrum. And we're just gonna give it a nice little squeeze and it's gonna make a nice little sort of bean shape or like a little V shape. And then I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees and place it into, let me get it settled in there and I'll show you. Place it into that second little notch there. There we go, just like so. So I have the V that's sort of going this way. So now I'm just gonna crimp it again and if you want, you can use the little tip there just to sort of pinch it, just to make sure that it is not going anywhere. Perfect. All right, so now I'm going to slip on my crimp cover and make sure that I, oops, <laughs> get this out of the way. There we go. Slip on my crimp cover and it just looks like a little Pac-Man that sits over top of it. And we're just gonna sort of pinch that closed and down and around. And I like to kind of come in with my pliers and just really make sure that it is as rounded as it possibly can be so that it looks like a nice little metal bead just happens to have a little seam there. All right, just like so. There we go. All right, and now I'm gonna take this little wire and sort of thread it back down through a bead or so. 
And here is where I'm gonna come in with my flush cutters, trim off my wire. And now, I'm gonna set that little piece aside and we can sort of scooch all of our beads down. So one side of our necklace is done. So you can see what I mean about having that little metal bead there. So it just looks like a round metal bead with our clasp. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it to the other side. Now here's one thing that I want you guys to be cautious about. So taking a look at the whole necklace as it is here, now, if I took my bead stopper, oops, I'll take this one. <laughs> if I took my bead stopper and really got it super duper close to that last little bead there, what would happen is when I tried to wear it, you can see how it's like crunching just a little bit. You can see how stiff and that wouldn't really lay particularly well. So one thing I wanna caution you guys with, and this is what I like to do, is I kinda like to coil my necklace, make sure everyone has a little bit of slack to it, coil my necklace just like this. And now I know that if I put this on snugly, everything will have a nice curve to it. So now we're gonna do that second side. So that's a little tip. You don't have to do this if, if you think it's strange, but I like to do that. It just sort of ensures for me that I'm not gonna pull my necklace too tightly. All right, and on this side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add on a closed jump ring as sort of the second half of our little clasp there, something for our lobster clasp to adhere to. All right, and I'm gonna go down through that crimp tube. And this is the same as it was on the other side. All right, so now we're gonna kind of scooch, and like I said, we're gonna to wanna to pull that down so it's nice and snug, but not too snug. You can see we still have enough little slack there. All right, and now coming in with our crimping pliers one more time. So make sure they're facing the right way. All right, and giving it a little crimp and a little turn and a little crimp, and a little bit extra. And then I'm just gonna take this tail and kind of sneak it down through that wood bead if I can. Oh, it looks like it's gonna go down through a couple beads, which is absolutely fine. <laughs> All right, sneak that down there. I'm gonna come in with my crimp cover. And the second side is always harder to see, which is why I really try to show you the first side there, just because there's a lot more, a uh, little, bit, little bit tighter space here. So again, just sort of use your pliers and gently bring that down, and bring it in. There you go. All right, and finally, I'm just going to snip off my wire there and we are all done. So I have my necklace here ready to go, my clasp with my lobster up here on one side, and my clothes jump ring on the other side. So that is why you wanna use a bead board if you're not quite sure of your design. I really like the way this turned out. I didn't plan this at all. So I still have some extra beads here to play with and those can go into a different type of a necklace. But I love that I was able to actually match some of mine up and this is a great way to use some older gemstones that you may have or even just playing with some different sizes and different shapes. So a great way to create a strong necklace using the Beadsmith bead board. You can get all of these supplies and see even more tutorials by heading over to beadaholic.com. And if you're new here to our YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button below to get all the latest from Beadaholic.